My name is Pranesh Rabindra and I'm the WMS Practice Manager. Today we'll be looking at the different types of reporting options available in COBA Edge WMS. So it's reporting, analytical and label design. Uh, joining this webinar with me is George Swire, uh, Senior WMS Consultant, and also AJ Mishra. Uh, he is the Lead Consultant and Solution Designer, uh, Solutions Architect. So let's look at the agenda. So the first thing we're going to look at is the Pulse module. The Pulse module is, uh, you know, includes dashboard, so you can leverage the extensible dashboard to deliver actionable information to the right people in the right format. So it's the BI tool, business intelligence tool available built in in the Cova HWMS software. It has real-time analytics, so it actually pulls the data real-time from the WMS tables, right? So you can monitor the health of key metrics in real-time. And of course, you can do all these using the browser. So Edge runs on any browser, so you can run any of these uh, Pulse module in the browser. So George is going to show us how to, you know, create dashboard, look at the dashboard, and also show the option of drilling down. So it's called actionable analytics, which allows you to drill down from the dashboard to the actual transaction screen. Um, we're also going to uh, look at the marquee. So obviously marquee is information you can display on television screen if you want. Uh, so we'll look at that as well. Then AJ is going to show us the label designing tool. So there is a built-in label designer software, and you can design your SLCC labels, your customer labels in any kind of barcode label. So we'll have a bit of an overview of the label designing, and then we'll explore the Microsoft SSRS reporting available in Edge. Out of the box, there is about 90 built-in SSRS reports that's available. So we'll look at some of the key reports, and we'll also look at just a bit of an overview of how do you go about modifying these reports if you want to. So what I'm going to do now is uh, pass on the presentation to George to run us through on the Pulse module. Uh, thank you. So over to you, George, now. Thank you, Pranesh. Um, Pulse is a tool that is, allows us to have timely and effective, it makes, helps us to make timely and effective decisions. So out of the box, there is about 12 dashboards that the system comes with and also around 60 KPIs that we can leverage off. That's not only what we can do, we can actually also create our own KPIs and also um, queries that will be able to be displayed within the system itself. So as you can see on my screen at the moment, I've got a dashboard presented. Up the top side here in the blue, we've got our functional bar that allows us to hide our, our bar in, in the um, panel itself. We can do some printing, we can do some editing as well. If we need to change, move these around and so forth, we can do that. And also we can refresh on the far right hand side here. And that will refresh the information. If there is some changes done, it will actually refresh and then update accordingly. Okay, so as you can see, we can not only do a number presentation, but we can do different types of charts as well as we can do our line chart, our bar charts, our stack bar charts, and even um, see the numbering there is what information we need to see by a number itself. And I can actually color code that according to what the number is. So right now, as you can see in uh, order status, uh, under waived, it's red, because I've made the criteria around that to be red. I said, if it's under 20, um, ready to wave, we're going to display in red. If it's 20 to 40, it's going to display in orange. And then we can go 40 to whatever number, 100 for argument's sake, we can display that as green. So you can also, depending on the metric that you want, you can actually display the information accordingly. But I'm going to go back and show my, my bar there. Now, as you can see here, there is different types of drill downs in the system itself. So Depending on the arrow, and you can see we've got a solid arrow versus an arrow pointing down. That means, that shows me that I've got different types of drill downs there, right? So at the moment, if I'm looking at, say, sales order status, I can see, yes, we've got so many orders 
um, well, we've got 68 orders for argument's sake that's uh, unallocated, but I can actually drill down into this and it'll take me to the work center itself. So once I click on that, we're in the work center, right? And it'll display my full work center. And at the moment, my criteria is to show me all the work center itself. Okay, so I can see all of it there from this point on. I can turn around and say, well, actually, I want to wave this order and this order. And there's my three orders that I want to wave, and I can go in under jobs and then wave that order and so forth. Okay, I can also use my pivot cards and split it up accordingly, and then drill down onto that and say, I only want to see this. So you can then drill down and use that functionality through the system and then go, all right, all these, I want to allocate all of them. Okay. So if we go back and we can go back into the chart itself, okay? Easy as that to actually action something from the actual dashboard itself. But also I've got my filtering here. I've gone, well, I only want to see the 13 that have been picked at the moment. What are the 13 being picked? I click on the 13 itself and I'll drill down into the 13 and there's my 13 that's been picked. I can see what handles they've got, which customers they are for and so forth. And if we have ship buyers, which all these are, well, majority of them in Australia Post, I know they're going to go buy an Australia Post. So now I'll go back. And another way of going back, if I can drop this down in here and I'll go back. So there's multiple ways of, of manual going around and seeing the system and going up and back. The other thing is you can see here, we've got a different type of chart that we've got here is, is a stack uh, bar chart. And I've got a different drill down. If I drill on this chart, it's showing me now as a grid and it's telling me the dates that things were shipped and what times they were actually shipped. So I can see, right, through the system here, if I scroll to the right, I can see most of my shipping end up getting done between 10 and one o'clock, right? There was a day here that we actually did stuff. Obviously a truck has come in late and we shipped it out at, at three o'clock. But you can see through, depending on how you create your grids and how you create your queries, you'll be able to display them accordingly. The other advantage here is I can actually turn around and say, well, I want all the information and I can export that out into Excel. And that's automatically in Excel. I can see it in here and I can open that up in Excel. And there it is exactly the same as what that grid was. And from there, I can do more work to that or present that accordingly. The other advantage, and if I'll go back now, the other advantage is you can actually click on the um, on the three lines here and you can expand the panel as well. If I just want to see that panel itself, I can just expand that panel itself. But also from there, I can export it out and into a JPEG. That will help me to present that into my, say, my board report. I want to show that on my board report. I can turn around, click on uh, make it as a, a JPEG or and that image then will be stored on my C drive and I can take that and present that into my board reporting as well. So we've got multiple functions there. Now if I come into here and I wanna collapse it, I go back into my menu and I collapse, okay? Another nice chart is this chart here where we got the um, action chart. Now the action chart there, the advantage here, and I'll, I'll expand that one, Right, it allows us to not only see what's happening um, through through picking and packing and what transactions are happening throughout the month, but I can actually also remove things. I go, well, I only want to see what's been picked and what's been adjusted, and I can see that accordingly. And I, as I go through the system, it will show me what the value is and what the month that it's associated with. Okay, it's quite handy. So we we've got some really good charts that we can present in the system itself. Okay, and then we've got our, our normal bar chart here that we can see as well and present that sort of information. Okay, now to manage these and change them and so forth, we've got the ability here on our three, on our panel settings and we can update the information accordingly. I can change what type of display it's gonna be. I can also define what I was saying before regarding what colors display, green, red, or, or um, yellow, depending on what the criteria is gonna be. But also I've got the ability here to change the layouts, put borders and so forth around it. So if I go back a step here, I've got another dashboard that I would like to show you guys. 
um, which is exactly the same dashboard, but it's displayed in a little bit different. I've put borders around it. I'm gonna take off the panels for a minute in the bar. So I've got borders, I've got a funnel here, I've got a scattered chart here. I've changed my um, layout of, of the um, bar chart as well and shown it horizontal. All right, same information, but it's displayed a little bit differently. Okay, now other common, and we'll, what companies find out or want to know about, I've got a little, a couple of examples for you here to just show it a little bit differently, to show you some information regarding what um, I've done in the past as well. Like, you know, people want to know about what's happening with their cycle counting, um, the status of their orders. So I've put that up the top there and these are all drillable. So I want to see, you know, held, held for replenishment. I can click on the held replenishment. I can see these are my orders that have held for replenishment. I know that I can manage them accordingly. If I scroll down a little bit, another one you know, really popular um, KPIs and stuff around, well, what's my empty um, bins like? You know, what uh, random versus my bulk area, what's empty in those areas? You know, what are my replenishments happening? I've got 24 products that need to be replenished, which is equal to 356 items. Again, can I drill down on that? You know, I, I can see what the orders are, I can see the items and I can see in my replenishment. Again, I can manage that from here and say, well, actually I don't want to replenish that one and don't want to replenish that one and I can delete them, all right? And then manage them accordingly, all right? If I scroll down a little bit more, we've got some KPIs regarding performance, you know, what's happening today, what are they doing? You know, there's a lot of people that are, are ordering or picking or they, um, yep, we were picking as well here and what's happening. So I can see the, the user HH is doing a lot of the work around that area, you know? What's our bins, maximum, minimum bins, you know? What are our system bins doing? Right now I've got a lot, one system or five system bins that are sitting there for over 24 hours that are just dormant at the moment, you know? What are, what are we doing with those ones? You know? They're nice to have KPIs themselves. And I'm gonna go back into another dashboard and go say for operations, right? You know, how many people are in the system at the moment? I can see there's one person in the system. You know, what our work orders like? Another nice to have is these sort of dashboards here where it tells me, you know, how many orders are overdue? How many orders do we need to pick today and tomorrow? How many orders prior, the next three days onwards? You know, what have I got versus volume? Not only orders, but I can see how many lines we need to pick and also how many, what's our weight side of things. So we're displaying that information in there. All right, and I mean, purchasing doesn't get put away as well. We can see what's happening with our purchasing, you know, what's coming in, what needed to come in the previous week. So I've got 32 purchase orders that haven't been received that should have been received prior to this week. You know, what's happening to those ones? And, and then we've also got stuff, information regarding what's happening this week, what's happening in the warehouse at the moment. You know, I've got two that have been suspended and I've got, um, a, I hover over being picked, I, just got, I can see that there's 19 that have been picked at the moment. Okay, and also in this scenario here, I've got, you know, my orders, not only I get um, my purchase orders coming in for the warehouse itself, but I've got certain purchase orders that are related to a freezer. Well, how many are related to freezers that are gonna come into the freezer? Well, I've got 72 coming in that are related to a, a freezer that I need to make sure that I've got room in, in, those, in that freezer, because obviously it's a requirement, they need to be frozen. Now, re regarding the marquee, marquee is a really good tool that will allow the users to be able to see information without being near a PC or even a, um, a, a device and we can display that within the warehouse itself. So we can have a TV in the warehouse, it will rotate and show the information as per the, um, as per the, the dashboard and depending on how many panels we've got in that dashboard, it will display that and refresh as well. So the information will be live, active and up to date. So I'll just to show you how to do a marquee here with one of our items. Um, I'm gonna go into, sorry, into the marquee itself. I'm gonna say, I'm only gonna do one panel or one dashboard. I can choose multiple dashboard. For this example, I will just show the one. I'll hit the start and ask me a couple of questions here. I'm gonna say, well, every eight seconds, just refresh. And I've got a choice here. If I had chosen multiple dashboards, I can say, yep, let's do 
multiple dashboards, but I'm gonna just do one dashboard with one panel that will refresh every time that it goes through and pops up on the screen, it will refresh. So I'll go start that, and then you'll see here, as we're going through the information that will be displayed, you can press, uh, push that onto a screen within the warehouse itself, and as people are going past, you know, that will be information that's related to these guys to say, well, this is how many orders that we've picked, this is what we're doing per hour, you know, this is what actions are happening at the moment, and it's gonna filter through, and we can make it as long as we like. At the moment, like I said, we've just got the eight seconds. I can see, well, you know, being picked, there's 13 at the moment that have been picked. And it just goes through that cycle all the way through. Okay. So not only we can do just that one dashboard, we can actually do by panel as well. And, and sorry, by dashboard, multiple dashboards at one time. So I can choose the multiple dashboards here and I can turn around and say start my, my um my marquee. But I'm, what I'm gonna do there is just do a dashboard itself and then just hit start. So it will just display the whole dashboard at any time for those eight seconds, all right? So depending on what our requirements are, we can, we can obviously display accordingly. So then we'll just go to the next dashboard and then display the next dashboard all the way through. And each time refreshing. Okay, so thank you for your time. Um, I'm gonna hand over to AJ now and he'll start with the with his presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Myself, AJ, and in this part of the session, we are going to cover labeling and reporting the um, functionality of the application and see how we can gain efficiency by automating some of them. So, um, Warehouse Edge, out of the box, comes with uh, labels, uh, many labels that uh, that are good enough to run our warehouse operations. As we can see in the label, print label templates, there are many labels like big text that we use for supplying to customers while picking the orders. We have carton labels, uh, which we can use carton content label that provide the detail of the carton on one label after we pick the order. Carton N of M label, which can be used when we use multiple carton on the order. At the end, system will automatically print N of M label, which is like, let's say we have picked five uh, um, cartons, it will automatically pick one of five, two of five, three of five labels, and then user can stick it and send to, before sending to customer, stick on the carton. We have bin labels to label our warehouse. We do have carton summary report uh, label. We have customer labels. Different customer may have different um, label requirement. For example, our Coles, our Woolworth um, have different label formats. So we can automate that, that process. So system will automatically printing print depending upon the uh, customer on the order it will print the respective format and um, um, and give it to us we have license plate to uniquely identify the pallets within the warehouse we have product labels so most of the labels that we need to run our day-to-day -day operations are already there in the system um, WMS Edge comes with graphical user interface label design toolkit which allow us to easily modify or create new label as well for example, one of the label here, big text, if we select that big text label, it will open us the label template. And in the label template, you can see the des designer over here. If I click on the designer, system opens up the label design toolkit as well. This toolkit allows us to design the label as per our requirements. As you can see here, it, it opens up the label pre-installed um, pre label in four by six dimensions. For our need, different label can be of different size. So we can go to property. While designing the label, we can change the dimension of the label over here. Using this tool set that is inbuilt in the application, we can select different tools like rectangle, eclipse, line to, uh, to define different shapes on the label to um, group it nicely. We do have text, uh, text tool, which we can drag and drop on the label itself. And that allow us to put any custom uh, um, text on the label we can also easily link the text onto the we can all easily link this uh, 
text with our data as well. So using this tool on the te text box itself, we right click, go to the property and select data binding. Selecting data binding allow us to select expose data set and we from here we can select any information like our ASN number, carton code, bill of lading number, our track trace number, which is carton number, our extra information, pack slip, all the information that is exposed to this label, we can select that and system will pull the information from the database and show it onto the label. Exposing this data to the label is also easy, but it does need little modification in the script, adding new data source in the script to expose the data. A modification of any um, um, any text is also easy. Going into the property, we can select that um, a text uh, font. We can select the style, size, all different things we can select and shape the label in the form that we need. It does support image. So uh, when we have the requirement of adding any image or any logo to our labels, we can easily use the image and link it with any saved image on the computer and it will store with the label itself. Talking about the label, we cannot escape barcodes. Barcodes um, allow us to print any um, different uh, barcode on the label itself. Warehouse Edge support most of the barcodes uh, used in logistics industry. Um, we can go to the um, select the barcode and going into the property, we can select we can select the barcode type. Most commonly used barcode is code 128 and code 39, but WMS Edge does support other barcodes as well. For example, data metrics that present complex barcode in two dimensions shape with multiple information in single barcode. It does support EAN 13 and 14 with other uh, EAN formats as well. It does support or it does compliance with all GS1 barcode formats. Um, WMS uh, Edge does support our UPC, but uh, different UPC formats as well with other formats. In this property, we can select the dimensions, width, ratio, and heights of the barcode to represent how big, small, and narrow the barcode needs to be. Now we have covered the dimension, uh, uh, the um, configuration of the label. We can ease how we can easily customize the label. Um, but the real benefit, the true benefit, also comes with automating these features within the WMS, so that the labels and other reports prints automatically um, at the time, at the various stages of order processing within our warehouse. So we have the uh, in WMS uh, Edge, we have the. Um, Functionality, first of all, we can uh, define um, we can define the label uh, format. So we can go to label, um, warehouse edge configuration, and in warehouse processes, label rule configuration. And here we can define that how automate how we can automate the printing of the label at different stages of. Um, um, order processing. If the order needs to be picked from our zone one, um, it will automatically print the label in zone one. So we can have different printers within our warehouse. We have zone two, zone three, we can define. So let's say we have one order which needs to be picked uh, two out of five zone within my, my warehouse and all zone have their respective printers. So the system will automatic, uh, automatically printer, print those labels in um, respective two zones, right? We do have end of line configuration. This end of line configuration is handy when we have different set of orders that needs different processing. Here, let's say one warehouse do process um, retail orders. At the same time, they also process wholesale orders as well. Retail orders do need to repack, gift wrap or something, and warehouse orders, um, wholesale orders need shipping confirmation, let's say. So in the end of line configuration, we do have different, six different set of end of lines. In retail, we can define zero as a retail um, uh, end of line process, order processing, where we want to do the repacking. And also we want at the end of retail orders to print um, cart and N of M label automatically. So we can say whenever we uh, last pick, it will automatically print the respective labels as per the cartons we have uh, picked. At the same time, we define another end of line for the wholesale orders. We need ship confirmation to be done for the wholesale orders. And let's say we want uh, carton summary label to be print for our wholesale orders. So we can say last pick or whenever we do the ship confirmation, system automatically print 
um, my um, carton summary report. So as you can see, with various set of um, configuration is there that will allow us to automate the process of printing the label and the reports at different stages of the order processing and gaining efficiency thereon. Um, so this is a quick summary about label configuration in Warehouse Edge. The next part is SSRS reporting part. Um, so let's move to re SSRS reporting now. Um, SSRS reporting is the uh, Microsoft reporting tool that comes as part of SQL Server reporting services, and it provides a set of on-premises tools and services that help us to create, um, uh, deploy, and manage paginated reports, right? Paginated reports are the reports which generally printed on A4 size paper, it could be different, but they are the reports like delivery docket, our uh, performer invoice, our pick slips, um, those sort of reports. Um, SSRS report is very widely used in the industry and it is a web based tool. So here you can see the web interface. We are accessing it via Chrome and all uh, on um, some of the inventory report, the warehouse edge inventory report deployed on the SSRS. We can see over here, it is showing the different reports over here right um, empty bin report cycle count report bin detail report adjustment report these are warehouse edge reports these reports are exposed to um, warehouse edge reporting tool called cover one report right inside cover one report there is a report launcher and using the report launcher we can access all the report uh, uh, install on the system. We have 90 plus report out of the box, which are um, um, used for various uh, purpose in the warehouses, but it is easy to um, modify the existing report or add new reports as per the need and requirement of the warehouse. Um, those 90 reports are grouped together in various sections. For example, here, uh, shipping reports, inventory reports, miscellaneous report, all the um, performance reports are grouped together in the performance report. Those reports are grouped in here. So selecting any report, you can see those groups of report and we can select those report and run those report easily. Some of the most used reports are, one is the order history report. This report gives us the uh, date when the order was processed, time, when, um, um, what time it was processed, who processed that order, and what action at respective time has been done on that particular order. So we can see the order has gone through 21 uh, steps. Um, it was unallocated first, it was moved to ready to be. So all the actions, who picked it, when he was picked, all details are there. And user can easily add those um, um, details into it. Other uh, report is a top handed by pick report, let's say this is one of the reports. So this report shows here, top item picked in last uh, 365 days, right? And user can select those parameters here. You can see these are the items that are picked most. And at the same time, system is also showing the open picks for these current items in the system. Other report is bin inventory report. Bin inventory report showing the warehouse status and what inventory it contain at the moment. So it shows the bin numbers on the left-hand side, product, UPC, and dimensions of the inventory, quantity, uh, pack size, and the total units within uh, within that particular bin. And it also shows the reserve status. Here you can see some of the items are reserved or blocked within my warehouse, so it cannot be used. It shows that those status, PO number from which the inventory came in my warehouse, and their uh, first in, first out date. We do have empty bin report out of the box, which, show, which shows the graphical user interface of the SSRS uh, and graphically present uh, the usage of my warehouse. So here we can see wh which uh, zones within my warehouse uh, have a lot of empty bins. It shows all my empty bins. So accordingly, I can plan my warehouse uh, if I can um, get more consignments in my warehouse, what space is allocated or not, it easily represent those figures. Now these reports, um, the other one is employee performance report as well, which is um, very often used is uh, showing the particular employee within the selective date range, week or month. It shows how many picks he has done, a particular employee has done, uh, total receipt he has done, cycle count, whatever action he has done within the warehouse because WMS Edge records and logs all the 
actions done by the user on the warehouse floor it records those actions and on this report it shows what they have done how many hours they have spent what is their actual performance and because we have the um, module called label uh, labor performance within the labor standards within the warehouse edge it can show the standard performance and compare the actual versus standards and highlight those employees now as we said earlier these are easy to modify as well opening these reports within w, um, ssrs um, report designer tool uh, this is the empty bin report which we have seen before uh, opened in uh, report designer. Uh, first, we can create the data source. Data source means creating the link between the uh, uh, report designer and the data source, the database, and creating our data set where we can link it or extract the, a particular table or multiple table using views from the database and expose that data set, set to the report. We can uh, easily add more fields. For example, here in the grid, we can add a new field and it will represent on the report itself. We can represent this data in the in the graphs format as well. For example, here we have, we have used pie chart, but SSRS report does support bar, char, um, um, bar charts, line charts, uh, dot charts, bubble charts, different type of charts it support, and we can represent the data accordingly. So that is about a little bit customization, or similarly, we can add new report and expose that report via report launcher within the um, uh, WMS reporting tool. So that was quick, uh, um, quick uh, um, feedback, quick uh, summary of the report launcher and the reporting capability of Warehouse Edge. Talking about report um, on each work center itself can be used as reporting or data extracting tool. Here, for example, we are going into the uh, orders work center. So in the orders work center, we have uh, all this information available to the user. User themselves can see, uh, select or choose what information they can um, uh, pick and choose, what information they want to see or view. So for example, here, priority column is not used by a warehouse. I don't want to see over here. I can go to the columns and unselect my priority. As you can see, it is gone. But at the same time, ship consolidation or let's say uh, ship two is very important for me. I want to see ship two. So it will show me ship two column over here. Now, showing the um, uh, format of this grid as well, user can select themselves for more important things. They can um, move it towards the left and, and configure this grid according to their need and preferences. Once it is set up, they can filter on each column. They can apply their filter separated by or they can put two filters by and and or they can also put multiple filter on the selected grid by going into multi filter option here the good part of this feature is that they can save this their search so they don't need to put these filters again and again so for example i would want to see all my back orders all my work orders i can select work order and system will show me the selected um, record over here. Once I have my um, uh, records, I see my data, I can easily export this data to Excel as well and work from there. So um, as you see in this session, we have covered the label, uh, labeling and barcoding capability of this uh, application and automation of printing the paperwork at different stages of the order processing. We also covered the SSRS reporting functionality of this application and how this can benefit by writing our own reports as well and the grid and work center capability.